Thank you very much. Because we're going to talk about business. This whole TPP, Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement, the word agreement wasn't there first, but for, for six or seven years, they talked about partnership. Partnership of what, by whom, for what, so on, was never described. Present at, at those meetings were representatives, generally the heads of state of 12 countries. What they talked about, negotiated, nobody knows. The previous government under Mr. Harper signed it off. The new government comes in, they're still signing it off. But they're also telling us that it's not yet passed, which is true, and this needs um, ratification in parliament and ratification in each provincial assembly. So how did it get there? It has not been presented in the United States Congress, in the United States Senate. So who were the people, who were the partners who were making these deals? Well, it seems banks, companies, car manufacturers, drug manufacturers, pesticide manufacturers, hormones, all kinds of things that are uh, sold. And the countries, there are 12, we know now. 12 countries. The United States, Canada, Mexico, the old NAFTA people, and then you go further down, there is Chile, Peru, and you go further, there's Japan, Vietnam, Australia, New Zealand. But if you look at that area, it's not just 12 in the Pacific, there's 61 jurisdictions. At the top of that map, you will see there's China and Russia. They're not part of it. They've never been part of it. They've not been consulted. So what is the partnership? What is it? We know that the saying is about trade, although the word trade is not mentioned in the partnership. There's no word called trade in there. But that's, it's all about trade. Trading what? What are they going to trade? You hear words like intellectual property rights. Those are not new words. They have been talked about for a long time. When we had the um, first FTA, the free trade agreement between Canada and the United States in 1988 or so, then that got turned into um, the, the NAFTA. Mexico was included. And each time that happened, it was promised there will be many more jobs for Canada. Well, that has been a lie. It was a lie then, but now it's a proven lie. <laughs> we know that. And they know that. And whenever that kind of thing happens, they get into trouble. They sit, all they say is, put another pipeline from Alberta either to the west or to the east. That'll create jobs. What happens to the environment? What happens to the country? What happens to the Aboriginal lands and so forth? Nobody wants to talk about it. Nobody wants to talk about the future, how we can generate energy instead of keep on doing whatever we are doing. They talk about things like climate change. Ordinary people don't understand. Half the people deny there's climate change, half the people say it's happening. You can't prove it, but we keep kept engaged there. But the real issues, where the climate change is occur occurring from, burning energy, and also the way we are fo producing food, nobody wants to talk about it. And actually, if you start talking about it, you can fix the problem. But they don't want to talk about it, because they don't want to listen to the people. Here is what happened, what came out during the election. 
In Ottawa, farmers brought cows and tractors and they were spilling milk on the road. This make became quite, a, had a dramatic effect. Right in front of the parliament, farmers were spilling milk. And that story was known from before to the CBC. And CBC, as it happens, because they do such this program, as it happens, they want to capture the news just like that. And since my name was associated with that story, and the story had come out, Mr. Harper had made a deal that now Americans are asking 10% of the Canadian milk market. But they have agreed to 3.75%. Well, Canadian farmers said, well, the American farmers, American milk contains RBGH. Yes, it's true, but if the farmers what will the Canadian farmers do? Here it's not allowed to be used in Canadian cows. So there's a conflict now. That means your contaminated milk you have avoided for yourself will be coming into Canada. Then what do we do? Then the, our own farmers will want to use it. So therefore you have to take the, that disapproval off. That means you're now going to actually accept, not only accept foreign uh, toxic milk, but you actually now are going to produce it yourself, which you said shouldn't be done. If that happens, then what are we going to do? Mr. Harper said, if that happens, we will promise uh, to give you compensation up to $4.6 billion. In other words, just to close your shop, they will give them compensation $4.6 billion. It's not in the budget, but we'll give it to you. Whose money are they promising? Our money. We are the taxpayers, not the corporations. But in the eyes and the minds of politicians, the taxpayer is always corporation. That pay no tax. That, that kind of stuff goes to Panama. So the CBC radio called me for my view on the subject since I was involved a long time ago in getting RBGS not approved in Canada. This is the public information. I didn't go out on the street to say they should not be approved. It was the Senate of Canada, the Farmers of Canada, Council of Canadians, they all got together and they dragged me before the Senate to go and testify what I knew. And they say it's an invitation. It's not an invitation. It's a subpoena. That means if you refuse to go, you lose your job. Now, if you go, you have to speak in public, and you're not allowed under the rules. So I said, so I'm willing to come, but I am on guarantees that nothing will happen to me after I go there. So written guarantees were given by the minister, Rock, and deputy minister, David Dodge, and the Senate itself. And on the record saying, anything happens to you even in five years, come back to you, come back to us, we'll protect you. So when I went there, they said, do you have an opening statement? Yes, sir, I do. And they said, what do you have to say? I said, sir, I have a problem. I have just taken oath to God to tell the truth. But when I joined the public service, I took another oath. That was oath to the queen. Now, the minister has given me a report to speak from, which was written by me, but from that report, pages and chapters have been removed. Now, how am I going to tell the truth? Truth which is in my head, or the truth that the minister is telling me to tell? 
Senator Whelan said, go with God. I said, thank you, sir. God's on my side is bigger than the queen. <laughs> As I presented the argument yeah, th th that we're being pressured to pass drugs of questionable safety going into food production, and the pressure is coming from the Privy Council of Canada, not from the companies. Companies cannot bring pressure because if I'm a government official, company cannot force me to say sign here. It is my bosses. And that pressure goes all the way to the Privy Council. That means the Prime Minister, the Cabinet, the Clerk of the Privy Council. It's all described in the Senate debates, in the Hansard, and thoroughly described, annotated with names and evidence in my book. It's become a reference book. It's out of print. People are trading it on Amazon.com, old books, for as much as $300. So I thought I should fix that. So therefore, now I produce a second edition on DVD. And instead of $30, now we'll sell it for $20. It reads like a novel, but it's all true. And it gets you very angry and upset. And it should, that this is happening to our country. After I spoke on CBC as it happens, to Carol off five minutes, so anyhow, so that was the story on the RBGH we put aside. Now RBGH will be coming into Canada or the milk contaminated with it. More than that, even when we did not approve in Canada, the Health, Health Canada left the back door open. That meant that fresh milk, we cannot use uh, RBGH in Canadian cows and fresh milk from there cannot come. And of course, fresh milk wasn't coming from there anywhere. You can bring a bottle, nobody bothers, but you can't bring a truckload of milk and sell it here. But what, what, what they didn't do, they did not ban BGH. They did not ban. If they had banned it, that means dry milk and milk products, cheeses, butter, cream, and ice cream, chocolates, they could not come into Canada either. If that was done, we would have had our dairy industry, we would have had jobs, and we wouldn't have had lost all those agricultural jobs. We're destroying our own country because of politicians, because of our prime ministers, whoever they are. It's not, I'm not saying it's this party or that party or this prime minister. This has been going on since the days of deregulation under Mr. Mulroney onwards, all the way. Both parties, every party. Very serious matter, and the public doesn't know. Now, what, in addition to RBGs, the problem gets even more, is, is worse, more serious. Because my complaint wasn't just RBGs. While this discussion was going on, there was, uh, and I said that at the, uh, the Senate, and it's described in my uh, uh, last chapter of the book and a separate article, which is also available there, the five pillars of food safety. What that means, five pillars of food safety, and that idea occurred to me in, in 2005 while on a speaking tour in BC at that time, when I had just been fired. And that means in our food supply, there are five items, toxic, and those five, are illegally approved in Canada. They're hormones for beef production, not just RBGH. Hormones and, and that cause cancer. Antibiotics that produce these superbugs and kill healthy people. And we have no antibiotics left to cure them. In hospitals, they pick up these infections in hospitals hormones, antibiotics, then there's slaughterhouse waste. Animals, after the meat is taken away, which is only half the animal, the other half is waste, and so 
they picked that up they, and whatever in the slaughterhouse, they collect it all and they also pick up uh, animals that die on the road, uh, roadkill accidents. They also pick up uh, from factories and dogs and cats and laboratory animals. All those animals are collected, boiled and turned into dry powder and then that is fed back to the animals. And we're all eating it, including it, including to the dairy cows. So if you're a vegetarian, it doesn't help. And then the hormones are injected behind the ear in the soft this, um, uh, in this, under the skin and left there to the day of the slaughter. At the time of slaughter, the ears are cut off and then they're, they're, those are boiled and turned into gelatin and that gets into your yogurt ice cream, gelatin capsule, and soft candy. Grannies, take. Don't chew on soft candy. You're going to get a dose of hormones and concentrated. We talk about cancer. Where is it coming from? And then there are GMOs, genetically modified organs, which is simply cannot happen in nature. You can make, this is anti-God, it's, it's, it simply is not, cannot happen. You can make hybrids, you can take a horse and a, and a donkey and you can make a mule, but mule will not either give you a horse or a donkey and a sterile, nor will it give another mule. But what we're doing is take the hormone of the cow or of the human and inject into a bacteria. Bacteria now produces the product like insulin, human insulin, or the bovine growth hormone, and then you inject that into people or cows to do whatever you think you want to do. That simply cannot happen in, in nature. Or you take the tomato gene and you, or you take the bacterial gene, you put into, a, it's called BT. And the scientists often, I ask them, do you know what the BT stands for? They say biotechnology. I say, uh-uh. This is the name of a bacteria. And that bacteria, we, on purpose, we give difficult names and we do, this, do so in Greek. It's called Bacillus thuringiensis. Can't even pronounce it. So they take that and put that into corn plant and into cotton plant and into soybean. And then now that bacterial gene, the plant thinks is bacteria. So it keeps producing that toxin so that when uh, uh, something sits on that plant, it dies. It's, in nature, it simply cannot happen. And just an um, amount of toxin that's going into the ground now is killing everything underneath. Then there's the Roundup, glyphosate. Glyphosate was originally registered as an antibiotic. It's not very toxic, it's not acutely toxic. Monsanto would say you can drink it and nothing would happen to you. That's true. But when you put it on a plant, it takes a couple of weeks for the plant to die. And it should be sprayed when the, the sun is out and there's green and the plant is growing healthily. What happens is it gradually, in the two weeks, it goes down the plant through its system. It's called systemic for that reason, pesticide, and it goes into the ground. In the ground, it ties up salts, magnesium, which is food for the plant. And now the plant dies. And anything it touches, anything green, will die there completely for another. So they're using this glyphosate. Now, that glyphosate is also being used to dry the, the uh, uh, um, crops at the end of the season, it could even go on wheat or any, any plant to draw the seed quickly out. It helps the... Now, 
Health Canada, CFIA, nobody's watching it. They don't care about it. But it's illegal use. It's not even approved for that purpose, but they're doing it anyway. And imagine now the plant and the seed now has on it actual glyphosate. And you want to make flour or you want to make oil. You can't even wash it off. You are actually swallowing it now. And when it's, you're swallowing it, it's causing inflammation in our intestine. And there are little tiny hairs that makes the intestine move. Peristalsis movement, we call them. And there are little hairs that are called cilia. The cilia fall off and we get celiac disease. If it's not celiac disease, it's all kinds of other, other uh, gastrointestinal problems. Now imagine 50 years ago, and they say, every time they say, oh, that's a genetic disease, that's impossible. If it's a genetic disease, there's a rate of genetic seed is, uh, is always constant. It cannot increase. But we now have epidemics of autism, cancer in children, allergies in children, diabetes in children, obesity in children, reproductive disorders in children, neurological disorders in children. We grandparents better worry because our grandchildren may live as long as we have lived, but we have lived a healthy life. Our grandchildren will live sick for all their life. And the drug companies are very happy about that. First they made you sick, now they come back to treat you. They're making money both ways. It's like making rusty cars in the 70s. Now they're rusting human bodies. So now why do we want to make this deal? When you look at the deal, They've told us already, this much is announced, there will be no label of country of origin. That means you will not know where one of the 12 countries has got this stuff from. They've told us about RBGH, because that happens to be Canada and US, and we raised that issue so it came up. But if I'm Japan, I can buy parts from Vietnam or China. Nobody can do anything about it. Or we already have this rule here. Anything in terms of food, etc., if it contains 5% Canadian, we can call it Canadian. So now, imagine, honey is coming from China. 95% honey in your bottle like, could be Chinese. 5% Canadian and it's called Canadian. And, the Ameri and in, in China, they're using a hormone, uh, uh, an antibiotic, chloramphenicol, which causes cancer, is banned here. And every, in fact, even when I was working at Health Canada, drums of honey were coming and CFA was, CFIA was uh, detecting it. It was there and then they were sending it to Health Canada. What should we do with this honey? And the bosses would say, pass it. I said, but this is banned in Canada. We know it causes cancer. So now it's going to get worse. You won't even know that it comes from China. And anything coming from China, in fact, now glyphosate is being manufactured in China. So if we're going to, in the TPP, we appear to be uh, doing uh, no deal with China, but we are actually trading with China. We can't even avoid it anymore. Chinese have taken over. And it's going to get worse. So in this TPP, there is another clause. The clause is that if we talk the way we are talking and we go out and say, we're not going to use it. This product, we're not going to use, we're not going to buy this. Now the company, if they say, as a result of your agitation, a municipality or a province or a people 
are not buying it, this is damaging to our, 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 our company, so we're going to sue you. We're going to sue the country. That's provided in the, in, in, in the agreement. And we are agreeing to it. So if they can sue the country, who is going to pay? Is the prime minister going to pay from somewhere? Is that in the budget? We already under NAFTA and so on, we've been paying hundreds of millions of dollars. And now it's going to get worse. Where would the money come from? And the new government, as a parliamentary assistant to the trade minister, he's going around meeting like this with people, a few people here and there selected. By the way, I've applied to appear there, and I got a reply back, a form reply. We received, thank you for applying. We'll let you know if you're invited, but we won't let you know if you're not invited. <laughs> so I won't know that anybody listened to me or they want to listen to me. We'll see what happens. So this is the position the current government seems to be taking. But I don't know. I hope the Prime Minister has a different view of the subject. We need parliamentary investigation, thorough discussion, and, and public has to be heard. There is something else, the saving grace, and that is this. And that has been tested before. No trade agreement can override safety standards. That's provided there. Technically, it's called SPS clause, sanitary and phytosanitary clause. That the European Union used that against Canada and the United States in the World Trade Organization. And both sides have now decided to leave it alone, the issue was very narrow. We were using hormones to stimulate beef production. The European Union has banned hormones, antibiotics, slaughterhouse-based, and GMOs, and they're still using pesticides. So therefore, they said, we have, Denmark said, we have proven that this, these hormones actually cause cancer they can initiate a new cancer, and they can promote an existing cancer. Therefore, they call them uh, complete carcinogens. And therefore, we're not going to use them, and we're not going to buy your meat where you're using it. And in 2012, both sides have said, OK, um, you do what you want, we'll do what we want, and so therefore, it's a win-win situation. I'm given two, victory. Looks like, give me two minutes. And so therefore, now they're saying, you do what you want. And that means Canada now, and, and the European Union says, we'll buy your beef provided you give us a certificate that you haven't used hormones, and then we have the right to come and audit. Well, who then, fine, who then is eating cows with hormones in it, externally given? The same thing applies to um, slaughterhouse waste. People don't want to, other people don't want to buy our beef because we haven't stopped um, uh, uh, feeding animals, animal waste to animals, and the European Union has banned it, Japan has banned it, they want to t test every single animal. And, but they've settled on one thing, that you um, will, they say they will buy uh, beef provided it's under the age of 30 months. The disease hasn't actually, maybe developing, but it hasn't actually manifest. And uh, as a result, um, that's the way it's going on. But my question is this, who is eating the older cows? You are feeding that beef paste to the babies. 
that dangerous beef paste to the babies. And why is more uh, serious for the babies? Because all the deaths up to now, the incubation period of their disease is up to 25 years. And as the baby, all, all the deaths up to now have been under the age of 40. So if a grandfather or grandmother or somebody over 60 eats it and a politician says, you see, I'm eating this hamburger, Ralph Klein, like he said, nothing is happening to me. Of course, you're going to die before that happens. But think of the babies. Remember what he said? Shoot, shovel, and shut up. Don't tell anybody what we're doing. So we are living in that morass of corruption. It has to be fixed. The reason I'm back here the third time, I agreed to come, is because I'm very concerned what's happening. But this story is not good enough. Because after listening to me, all of you will go home, maybe concerned, and then go to sleep. Yeah. Nothing will happen. I want something done by us as citizens. The time to take action. And there are a number of things we, we can do, including we can sue our government, not the companies. If the companies can sue countries, then people should be able to sue their governments. It is the governments who are doing wrong. It is the government who is responsible for making such decisions without the participation of the public. Politicians are as much public service employees as anybody else. We pay their salaries. So we have a contract with them to protect us, to serve the public. It's a simple matter. We do elections, we vote, that's a contract. And the overruler of that contract is the Supreme Court of Canada. We should be able to go to court and say, Minister of Health has given this responsibility under the Food and Drugs Act, but it's being broken. Order Health Canada, order the Minister of Health, order whoever the Privy Council is to implement that law. Because hormones, any, any product that's given to food producing animals or any food, if there's toxic material used, then by law, they have to determine the daily residue that we can consume for life without getting sick. That has to be determined by the company in agreement with Health Canada, and it has to be published in Canada Gazette. You go to Canada Gazette, that information on hormones is not there. If it's not there, then that government is liable for breaking the law. Thank you very much.